Nate. Good evening and welcome to the NCAA women's basketball first round news conference as Virginia Tech defeats Chattanooga in the first round 58 to 33. Uh, just a reminder that there is to be no videography inside the news conference room. Uh, press conferences can be downloaded at ncaa.veritone.com. Reminder to media members to please state your name and affiliation uh, when you first ask a question. There will be a microphone going around the room. We will see you, and we will make sure the microphone gets to you. We will also be taking questions via Zoom tonight. Please raise your hand and allow a moment to be unmuted. Uh, we are joined by the Chattanooga Mocs, head coach Sean Poppy, Abby Cornelius, and Yaz Waziradine. Uh, we will take an opening statement from Coach Poppy. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm super proud of this group. Um, the two seniors that I have sitting up here, uh, everything they poured into us, um, the, the kids we have in that locker room, it's a sad day. It's a sad day because uh, it's a group that, that I love dearly. They've poured everything into to our new staff in our first year. Uh, and given everything they possibly could. It just, you know, tonight, uh, Virginia Tech was a better team. Um, they're, they're a really good basketball team over there, and uh, we knew coming in that, they, that we had our hands full. Um, I thought we did a, a really good job at times defensively, and, and uh, apparently so today. <laughs> they, they were stifling. It was hard to get good looks, and um, the ones we did get, uh, we just we couldn't get in, into any, any runs. We couldn't put anything together. So, um, congratulations to Coach Brooks and, and Virginia Tech, and we wish them nothing but the best. But I um, love this group we have and, and so proud of, of what they've done for us. Let's open it up to questions for the student athletes. We'll start with Mark in the front here. Uh, yeah, for the players, uh, to follow up on that, I guess, what, what about uh, um, Tech's defense made it a tough shooting night for you guys? Um, I don't think it was anything special. They was pressuring. I mean, we just had to shoot it with confidence. Going, shooting like, what we shot? 28%. That's not us. So I guess they did good pressure, and we just didn't shoot it with confidence. Abby, I mean, was it, did it you know, was having, uh, you know, having to deal with Kitley's height, was that a problem for you, for, for example? Yeah, that probably affected me a little bit. We don't play any 6'6 six, six players on a regular basis, so that definitely did good. play a factor. Let's go to David in the front. Yeah, David Cunningham, Tech sideline for the players. Um, you guys held Tech def defensively for you guys. You guys held Tech at times, really stifled them, forced a lot of turnovers. What did you like at, at moments that you guys did, and what made it so hard to sustain defensively at times? Um, I like how, like, when it was time to fire on Kitley, like we did, and, you know, we executed that game plan. Um, I feel like at times we didn't execute and that hurt us and they made us pay. So that's really about it. Second row. Hi, uh, Joey, Legacy Maker Sports Network. How much did the uh, crowd affect you guys? Uh, did, did that have any factor in how you guys were shooting or how you were playing defense or anything like that? Or how, just in general, how much did that crowd affect your guys' play today? I think it just affected how much we could hear each other, but that environment was great and it was a blast to play in. Additional questions for the student athletes. Front row here. Uh, Samantha Cassano uh, with Local 3 in Chattanooga. You, the Hokies went on a 14 0 run in that first and second quarter, and it wasn't for lack of trying for some of those shots that you guys had. They just weren't falling. How frustrating was it to just not have those fall and just try and stay locked in? We'll stay with Abby here. It's always frustrating when the other team's knocking down shots and you're getting good looks and they're not falling. So that was frustrating, but we um, just had to rebound better, and I felt like we did a better job coming out of timeouts and just fighting together. Uh, sure. Uh, so then, I mean, for both of you, I mean, you guys are both seniors. Abby, you've been here forever. Yes, I know this was your first year here, but what are you guys going to remember most about being Chattanooga Box? Let's go to Yaz for this one. Um, just the team and the bonds that I built with my teammates and coaches. <laughs> it was a fun ride. Abby. Um. from the teams I've had, the coaches I've had, um, our fans. It's just a big family. 
and I will never forget my time here. Additional questions for the student athletes? Thank you very much. You can head on back. Just a reminder, the Chattanooga locker room will be open until 8.05. 8.05 is when the Chattanooga locker room will close. Uh, head coach Sean Poppy, questions for coach. Uh, we'll keep it on this side with David first and come to Mark. Yeah, David Cunningham, Tech Sideline. Sean, you've, you've known Georgia for a really long time. What has impressed you so much over the years about how she's continued to get better and you know, she's still got a couple years left? What about tonight and the way she's playing this season is just so tough for you guys to defend? Not just you guys, but every team that yeah, everybody. Techs yeah. come up against. Uh, first and foremost, I think you answered some of the question yourself. She continues to get better. Um, she's such a humble kid, um, and it's been fun this year watching from afar. She just continues to get better. She continues to um, spend time in the gym, obviously, with Coach Brooks and his philosophy. I've been there, seen that. Um, the amount of times they watch film together, it just continues on. And, it, you know, it, what makes her so hard to guard is that, first and foremost, she can score at all three levels. Um, and, and she's got such a pace to herself uh, that it's, it's hard to – I mean, we were trying to funnel her into areas tonight and um, to, to try to get her to shoot twos because she's so deadly with her little step back. And, um, you know, she can hit you with so many different – she can play in transition. She can play out of the ball screen. They've added some stuff to play her out of some staggered screens. And um, you just can't lose any kind of focus on her. You know, I mean, she had a three to start the fourth quarter. We knew the play call. We know what's coming. And she still gets a wide open three. And it's like, uh, that's, how, that's how special she is. So I'm proud of her. Um, she obviously hurt us tonight. And um, I'm excited to watch her continue this run in the NCAA tournament. Okay. Said to Mark. Yeah, Sean, what um, – uh, to go back into the uh, – to what about Tech's defense made it a tough shooting night for you guys? Yeah, um, and I know it was frustrating for these two that are up here because they wanted it so bad. Um, I mean, we <laughs> – I was here. I know the philosophy. We have very similar philosophy where we're at. They put so much pressure on you to shoot contested jump shots mostly off the dribble. And any screening actions, they're there on the catch. Um, Obviously, they funnel you inside to Kitley, which is, presents a huge problem. Um, if you don't have a, a kid that can stretch the floor as a five, then, then she can kind of sit back in there. And um, what it does is it forces you to be able to beat them one-on-one -on -one off the dribble. Um, and that's not how we're built. And so uh, I feel like the one chance we had was to shoot behind some ball screens, um, which I think that was the frustrating thing with Yaz that was up here, that she felt like she got good looks. And, and I think some of the size and length we don't see on a regular basis. Um, I think, and this is kind of probably long-winded, but back to an earlier question about the crowd, we struggle getting play calls to all be on the same page. And so there's a lot of possessions where four of our kids were in something in the fifth kid and how we play, we need all five. And so uh, that would throw us out of rhythm, you know? And so uh, for a game like this, you have to be all on the same page and we have to execute with, because we just run so much stuff to try to manufacture points. And then in terms of your defense, uh, uh, Liz only took six shots today, made four. What was kind of the defensive game plan against Liz? Well, I mean, we'd send a double every time she caught it. Um, as much as we, that's what, I think you heard the word fire. That's what we call our double team fire. Um, you know, so we, anytime she caught it, we were trying to run people at her. Um, obviously playing her one-on-one, -on -one, I didn't think we had any chance. Um, the only, you know, the, the thing with them, sometimes people don't do it because you're trading twos for the ability for them to shoot threes. Um, you know, again, I thought for the most part, we did a pretty solid job defensively. Um, with that said, it's kind of been our same story all year. We, we managed possessions, so we, we, we knew we couldn't stop them if they had 75 possessions, but we thought if we could keep them into the – I mean, we, we actually – our goal was low 50, so to have 48 and then a handful of free throws, we were right there. Um, but you can't shoot 28% against them and think you have a chance. Back row. David de Guzman, WFXR TV in Roanoke. Uh, Sean, I was wondering if you could maybe share a little of what Kenny told you after the game, and what's maybe the biggest takeaway you took from him as you wrap up your first season as a head coach? Well, uh, uh, the, the little handshake is just, I love you, and I love you too, right? That, that man means so much to me and my family. Um, 
for what he's done to help me as a coach, but really to be, to be honest with you as a father, um, to be a husband and, and manage it inside this business. Um, he obviously is excited for us as we're, we're going to have baby number three any, any moment. Um, hopefully my phone hasn't went off. <laughs> um, and then he's just proud of me. You know, I, I thought, and I think he's, I, I believe he's right. He said, your kids competed their tails off, and we did. Um, we just didn't have it today. Um, as far as, as what I've learned the most, it's relationships, how he does, um, you know, he's just a genuine human being that has true relationships with anyone that comes in contact with him, um, especially as players. And I think what happens is, is it's a true love. And so you can coach him hard. You, you can love on him hard. And uh, they continue to get better and better and better. And that's what you see out there. It's just amazing what he's done. Coach, I know today obviously didn't go the way you guys had hoped, but a 20-win season, SoCon title, how would you assess year one, and what do you think about the future of this program? Well, I think that a lot of people would say we overachieved. Um, and you know what? Maybe 11 months ago, I would have said it too when I first took the job. Um, uh, with that said, I feel like we've created a lot of momentum. Um, this group that I've had has bought in. Uh, to our culture, how we do things, how we operate, and um, what you saw tonight is, is really an example of that. They're going to compete, and they're going to trust, and um, I think we've laid a foundation and probably skipped some steps, to be honest with you. To, to think that we're here in year one, um, I think we skipped some steps, and now we got to continue to build off of it. I told them in the locker room, remember this week, remember getting our name called, that feeling in front of our home fans, and remember how they were treated all week leading up to here. And, and don't maybe remember this moment in the sense of a loss. Um, but I, what I mean by that is because this has to push us forward. You know, this spring and workouts, this summer, we've created a culture of this is what we do here. And um, so we got to use it and springboard us forward um, because I do think that we've, we've skipped some steps. Additional questions for Coach. Coach Poppy, all the best to you on baby number three and to your team moving forward. Safe Thank travels home. Thank you so much. Reminder, the Chattanooga locker room will be open until 8.05 to the media. Virginia Tech is up next with head coach Kenny Brooks, Elizabeth Kidley, and Georgia Amor. Welcome to the day's Virginia Tech, the number one seed, winners over Chattanooga 58-33 tonight. They are now winners of 12 straight games, advancing for the ninth time in program history in the NCAA tournament. We are joined by head coach Kenny Brooks, Elizabeth Kidley on the heels of her 20th double-double of the season, and Georgia Amor, 22 points, her 11th 20-point effort this season. We'll begin with an opening statement from Coach Brooks. Um, hard, hard game, obviously, uh, going against... Uh, a good friend of yours, somebody who really helped you build this program. Uh, emotions were, it was a little bit weird. Uh, I, I guess it was kind of a little bit weird all the way around. Uh, you're playing in Castle and some of the things you're used to in Castle, you know, you're not able to do. Uh, but, you know, we had to adjust and um, give them credit. You know, they, they came out, they, they were scrappy, they played hard. Um, we were a little bit rusty, uh, which I felt like we were going to be. 12-day uh, layoff, uh, kids in and out. 
of the lineup. But uh, it's always good to get a win uh, to start everything and then to keep it going. You know, the, the old adage is survive in advance. We want to be a little bit better than that. Um, but we're, we're fortunate uh, to be able to get a win today. We'll open it up to questions for the student athletes. We'll start with Mark in the front row. Uh, yeah, for each of you, um, what did you feel like your defense did pretty well to make it a tough shooting night for them? Um, I mean, they had 33 points, yeah, but we all know that our defense could have been better. Um, we didn't finish plays like we needed to. Um, I think we didn't make them feel us enough. I think they kind of were able to dictate what they wanted to do uh, more than we should have let them. Um, but yeah, I mean, they did have 33 points, but we, we know that we can be better and that we need to be better to move on. I would say also a large majority of their points was of, off of our breakdowns, um, second chance points, back doors, um, simple mess ups on plays. Um, so yeah. Second row. Yeah, Will Lachlan, Tech Lunch Pail. Uh, Liz and Georgia, Liz, you kind of screened Georgia open on her fourth three and then on the fifth one, you skipped it over to her. Just how is your on-court chemistry for both of you just continue to grow, grow, and grow to the point where it is right now? Um, I think we just know that we need to be outlets for each other. Um, you know, she gets pressured a lot of times and she needs a little break. And then, you know, sometimes if the pressure's on me, then I know that she's going to be there moving um, to be open. Um, and that just benefits both of us. So the more that we can make them pay for that, then the harder it will be to take us away. Yeah, I'd say Liz and I probably conversate a lot more on the court than it probably is shown. Um, yeah. I feel like we have like sometimes too lengthy of conversations. Um, so I'm always trying to help her because she just gets absolutely hounded. Mark in the front row again. Yeah, I just wanted what you thought of uh, the crowd tonight. I've always liked to play in front of that, uh, that big crowd. Yeah. I mean, that was awesome. That means everything to us. Um, uh, yeah, just the way that they, they showed out um, at the end of the regular season, I knew that it was going to be great energy in here. And um, yeah, the students, shout out to the students because I heard it was a hard time getting tickets. So it's really cool <laughs> that they all um, entered the lottery and came. So we really appreciate that. Yeah. It makes a difference. And it's not like they just filled the seats. Like it was really loud. And yeah. um, it honestly makes a difference to the game, like free throws and everything like that. The, the stadium was literally shaking. Yeah. Okay. David. Yeah, David Cunningham, Tex Highland. Liz, for you, um, what, what's it been like to watch Georgia grow as a player and all the time she spends in the gym, I know, but um, o over the years from when you guys first started playing together, when she first arrived, had to adjust to the American style of basketball to now where she has 11, 20-point games on the year and yeah. is consistent in leading you guys on yeah. offense. Um, I mean, I say this a lot, but it just it's really cool for me to see her confidence grow because I think the people around her have always thought that um, that she was incredible and could do incredible things like the crazy moves that she makes. Um, so it's nice to see her have that confidence in herself, I think, also, because we know that oftentimes the ball is best in her hands and good things happen. Um, so, yeah, I mean, she's a great player, and you guys don't even know she can do even more. She's crazy. Uh, Georgia, for you, you broke the record for uh, single season threes uh, in just text program history. So what kind of zone are you just finding yourself in at this point? Um, just a level of confidence right now. Um, not really hesitating on any of my shots. And that's a credit to Coach Brooks because we shoot often, very often. Uh, and even like my teammates just finding me open, like it helps. I feel sorry for Liz because she does get hounded, but it seriously helps open me up too. Um, yeah. What did she do? What did she do? Sorry? What did she break? I think it was single season, uh, most threes in a single season. <laughs> Additional questions for the student athletes. Okay. Congratulations on the victory tonight. A reminder the tech locker room will be open until 8 20 to the media. 8 20 for the tech locker room. You can head on back. Questions for Coach Brooks. We'll, we'll start here in the second row. Uh, Jimmy Robertson, Associated yes. Press. Kenny, I think in uh, during his 12-game winning streak, 11 of the teams have shot 40% or worse. 
Are you surprised at how good your team has been defensively this season? No. Um, I, I think I've been saying it since the end of last year and even uh, when we had a media day at the ACC, that our defense is going to surprise a lot of, a lot of people. Um, and just the way that the kids are connected, they understand each other, uh, they understand the game, they're older, and uh, they're, they're able to take away a lot of different things for you. And, you know, we're not going to try to shut you down, but we're going to make you take tough shots. And I thought we did that today, made them take tough shots. Uh, as they alluded to, we, we had a couple of breakdowns, but we haven't played in 12 days. Uh, we were a little bit slow to the ball, a couple of different plays. But, you know, it's kind of crazy when, you know, I was just I was fuming at the end of the game in, in the locker room a little bit just because I know we could be better. But then you look down and they have 33 points. And uh, I'm not sure if anybody else has, you know, held anybody at 33 points on, on the first day or not. So I'm proud of them. That they're really good at taking away some stuff. Uh, I just know how good they can be, and uh, we need to get a little bit better than we were today. Uh, Kenny, obviously Taylor left in the end of the third quarter there. Uh, was she just cramping up, or what's and how is she looking there? Yeah, I guess when you have that many muscles, you're going to cramp up. Uh, she's she's a strong kid. I could have they uh, the word I got was I could have put her back in at the end if I needed to. Uh, if I didn't need to, then don't. Um, so you know we'll we'll. We'll get her some fluids, uh, let her rest, you know, today, um, see how she feels tomorrow. But I think she'll be, uh, she'll be fine. Uh, did, your, did their defense do certain things to make it tough for you, or is that just rust today uh, in terms of offense? No, I think it's a little bit of both. Um, uh, they did a really good job. They had a game plan. Uh, we, kept, we kept it, um, and no disrespect to anybody. I mean, obviously, you know, Poppy is, is, is near and dear to my heart. But um, we kept it vanilla. Uh, we, we didn't want to do a whole lot of the stuff that we were going to do. And um, uh, they made it tough for us. And it's kind of one of those games where you go, OK, just figure it out. You know, we just needed to figure out. Just try to get, get back in rhythm. Um, because, you know, I don't know who we're going to play on Sunday, but they're going to do some things to take it away. And we just needed to get back into rhythm. So, uh, but, you know, give them credit. They, they had a good game plan. Uh, but we just really kept it vanilla so that we could just, you know, try to work out some of the kinks, but you know, also not expose everything we wanted to try to do. David Cunningham, Tech Sideline. Kenny, what was, from your perspective, what was the crowd like? Um, it was. Uh, you've coached here for so long. Yeah. Highest attended game in your history and fourth largest all time for Tech women. Yeah, it was awesome. Uh, our fans are, are fantastic. I think one of the kids said it. You know, they, they don't just show up and sit in the seats. They make a lot of noise. Um, I wish they would have let us play Inner Sandman. Uh, I think the roof would have would have blown off. NCAA. Uh, you want to see you want to see something electric. Let let us let us play in a sand, man. This this roof will blow off, uh, and uh, because we have we have a great atmosphere, we have great fans, uh, we have so much tradition, and um, so I, almost it's like you know um, chat and and San, uh, South Dakota State and USC. They might get cheated a little bit because this could be really, you know, a, an electric environment. But it, but it was good. It was fantastic. I thought they were loud. Did they give away bacon or are they just practicing for bacon next year? Oh, they just like bacon, okay. Um, no, but it was great. I, I really, I'm, I'm so proud of where we've come and for my kids to be able to experience that, you know, it, it's tremendous. As far as USC and South Dakota are concerned, that tips in a couple minutes. Is there anything specific you're interested to watch? I know you probably haven't had a, a, a chance to look at them, but to, to play a second round game now in, in Castle in front of another sold out crowd and what are you expecting? Well, I mean, um, it's kind of crazy because they're, they are two contrasting teams, uh, you know, one end of the spectrum and then the other. Um, so we're just going to sit back, you know, figure it out. You know, you don't, you don't dare, you know, want one over the other. My grandmother always told me, be careful what you wish for. Um, but we're just ready to, to play whoever. But they're, they're so different. They're so different. Uh, South Dakota State, I don't think they've lost in, since like, what, 10 years? You know, they, they, they've, they've been beating a lot of people. Uh, and then obviously, Lindsay does a tremendous job with her program at uh, Southern Cal. So um, we're going to have our hands full. We understand that. And um, so we're just going to sit back and see who it's going to be. Let's go to Jimmy here. Yeah, Kenny, in light of what happened in last year in the first round, how important was it to, to break out and get that double digit lead early in this game and take it, control? Yeah, it was good. Uh, we, we understand. We keep a lot of stuff in house. Um, last year, we lost to. Florida Gulf Coast, and we, we were just we weren't healthy, you know. Kayla King has sprained her ankle really bad in the tournament. Liz had had shoulder problem in the tournament. Uh, Asia Shepard was limping a little bit. Give Florida Gulf Coast credit, um, but you know we, we learned that we just needed to take care of business. You know, you can't take anything for granted. 
Um, we wanted to make sure we host it. We were, we were almost hosting last year and we had to go to Maryland. Um, but it also, it also, you know, fueled them to understand, now these kids are older, you know, that this is not their first, second, or third, you know, game in the NCAA tournament. They've experienced it. They've, they've learned valuable lessons every time we played. Um, and they, they take that. They take it and they, they make sure that it motivates them. So um, last year's loss motivated us because we lost. Uh, but we also, we also knew we weren't very healthy. Uh, coming into this year, you know, we were as healthy as we can be. And we, uh, you know, mine is Taylor Soul's uh, cramping. You know, I just want to make sure we stay healthy so we can try to make a long run. Okay. We'll hear. You kind of joked on Selection Sunday about how they know your plays, you know theirs. But did Coach Poppy give you kind of any surprises in that aspect? No. Uh, you know, at, at the last couple of years that, uh, that Poppy was here, um, I let him do a lot of the defense. Um, and I know what he likes. Uh, I could have could have walked into this game and I could have told you exactly what he was going to do. And uh, he did it. You know, he did it. Uh, but, you know, like I said, we wanted the kids uh, to, you know, be able to play through it, play through some of the rust. Uh, and his kids did a good job of uh, executing some of it, some of the stuff that they wanted to do. Uh, took Liz away. It, we, we, we kept it vanilla with Liz, and, you know, and just really let her try to figure it out instead of trying to move her around a little bit. Um, but uh, it was a really good game plan, and the, their kids did a good job executing it. Okay. We'll come to David in the back corner here. Dave DeGuzman, WFXR TV Roanoke. Kenny, um, among the many faces in this sold out crowd was uh, Asia Shepard. I know we've talked about this during the season, but what does simply her presence do for your team and comment on how she really still has a, a hand in the success that you're having this season? Sheppy's here? All right, good. She told me, I, I, she told me that she was, all right, well, she, she'll, she'll, she'll get a piece of the net. I know that. Um, She's fantastic. You know, as soon as we won the championship, you know, she's texting me. She and I had a long uh, FaceTime conversation, uh, albeit she was sitting on the beach when we were, at, while we were having it. Um, you know, they had a beautiful location. Uh, but, you know, she, she's a lot of times kids would get or people might get um, a little angry that it happened when they left. And she couldn't be more happier for this program, and that's just the kind of person that she is, and, I, and that's the kind of person we wanted to build on, build this program around, and uh, her, just her pride in Virginia Tech, her pride in this program uh, is second to none, and she will always be an ambassador for us, uh, even as she continues on a new legacy that she's creating for herself, she's always going to represent Virginia Tech and be a tremendous ambassador for us, and uh, that's why I love her to death, and you know, she's a staple and this program and the development of this program, and she's had a big hand in, in any of success that we will have in the future because of what she sacrificed and did. Coach Brooks, thank you for your time. Congratulations on the win tonight. We will see you here tomorrow. Thank you. Guys. Once again, a reminder, Virginia Tech's locker room is open until 820. 820 for the Virginia Tech locker room. Thank you.